Mr. Fred Newman, our sound effects man down there, celebrating 75 years in radio broadcasting. Oh, oh really? Uh, it looks like it's been no more than 60, 75 years. He goes way back, way back to the golden age of radio, back when radio was fighting with television, competing, trying to put on more and more violent shows. That's how they did it back there, like Timmy of the Jungle. And now Boston brand shredded soybeans presents Timmy of the Jungle. Oh, it's so darn dark all of a sudden, Rex. Oh, Rex, I think we're lost. How come those giant birds are circling? Oh, is that a tree branch or is that a snake? Rex, where'd you go, Rex? Oh. It was a show that terrified me as a child. I was a small child listening to Fred doing the sound effects on that show. I just had to leave the lights on all night all over the house. And then there was the Hap Harrison show. You probably remember that. Once again, it's time for Hap Harrison Special Delivery. Racing along the winding coastal highway. The thousand foot sheer drop to the surf below. It's postal delivery man Hap Harrison taking the mail through as fast as a man can travel by car, by aeroplane, by hot air balloon, by submarine. It's Hap Harrison brought to you by Carnival Brand Shredded Corn. Always oh, a great show. The thing about Hap Harrison was that the special delivery packages he delivered were always containing explosives, and he only discovered it at the very last minute. Oh, a package for me? For my birthday? Wait, wait. How don't, lovely. Oh. Don't touch that. Well, no, no. Well, what are you doing? You're throwing my birthday package over the cliff, down toward those giant oil tanks. Oh. <coughs> Why, you saved my life. How can I ever thank you? Oh, we don't expect thanks, Mrs. Grady. We're the U.S. Post Office. Yes, Fred did all the sound effects for those shows as they became more and more violent as radio was trying to lure people back from television. Oh, he, he did guys getting stuck in the back with a knife. Four or five times a week, four or five different shows, Fred would do a helicopter coming in low over the ocean surf, firing machine guns, the enemy oil refinery, which went up in a tremendous explosion. Ball of fire, thousands of feet into the sky. And sometimes the chopper would fly in low over the surf, send out radio signals that guided Navy-trained dolphins who flipped a switch on the belt around them and fired rockets at enemy bombers and blew them up, blew them up. <laughs> Nothing but explosions day after day and carnage and violence. <laughs> Meanwhile, there was so much that Fred could do that was more subtle, that was more artistic. He could do bees really well. He could do cicadas. He could do a lawn sprinkler. He could do great lawn sprinklers. Fred, he's the Michelangelo of lawn sprinklers. He could do Japanese koto. And he could do a tenor saxophone. He could do a chihuahua singing the doxology. Begged management for a chance to do a family show, something with pets and lawns, but no, no, it was violence, nothing but violence. That's all they wanted. And that's why Fred came to public radio. Peaceful radio, where we do stories about Mennonites sitting in a rocking chair on a porch with a cat in their lap and playing a hymn on their zither. 
watching the birds at the bird feeder and peace and contentment. And the only scary thing in the whole story is the Mennonite teenager. Hey, can I have the car tonight? Oh, oh, oh. Where are you going to go, sweetheart? Going out, gosh. Well, okay, be sweet. <laughs> Seventy-five years in radio, Mr. Fred Newman. <laughs> <laughs>